and I did end up losing one beer till Amphius. Now this was the second largest leer tail and I believe what happened was the biggest guy I miss well I call him a guy he's probably still a female but the biggest one must have um, really wrecked him wrecked her the second biggest one when I found her well I was feeding the tank and I I always count the fish when I'm feeding the, the tank and I noticed I was one short and I finally found her. She was hiding and she wouldn't come out and she was really pale. Her fins were badly nipped. Um, I, I thought the day before when I checked them out, everyone looked fine. So I was really, I was surprised. However, um, they are in a 20 gallon tank with, there is some hiding spots, but um, I guess if when the fish really wanted to get uh, the other one, there's really not much um, the weaker guy could do about it. So unfortunately I did lose one of the female Leertilanthius, so I do have four in the tank. And the four look to be doing okay. Uh, one of them, I noticed some fray fins on one of them, but I'm really hoping in this tank there's going to be enough hiding spots for them where they're not going to... Uh, if one of them's being picked on, she can find a place to hide and kind of recover. Okay, uh, at the end of the day though, I do see them hanging out with each other. And I credit that to the two tangs. When I put them, when I put the fish into this tank, uh, the two tangs kind of... I wouldn't say they went crazy, but they were definitely... You know, they definitely chase the fish a few times, probably just to show them who's boss. But overall, I haven't noticed anything where... I haven't noticed any of them trying to kill any of the fish, at least so far. And one of the benefits I'm finding, even just the, the following day, after putting the fish in the tank, is the flame hawk fish is much more comfortable coming out. And you can see him in the top left there. Um, yeah, he just seems much happier to come out and hang out, which is really good. So, so all these additional fish, they're kind of acting like dither fish because the green chromises, they always hang out on top. And even the clownfish that's in here, I've noticed that he's starting to, he's more willing to explore and come out. Uh, now part of it may be because they're a bit concerned that there might not be enough food for everyone. But I do think part of it is, um, I believe their instinct, if they don't see many other fish around, is that there could be trouble and they want to hide. So having all these fish around, it's great. And a lot of these fish, yes, they are known to uh, be territorial. However, I'm really hoping the tangs will help negate any aggression. Uh, I think they'll do a good job with aggression. At least that's my hope. But we'll see. Like, it's very possible in three to six months I could only have one Lyrotelanthus left. We will see. But, um... Anyways, I... Sorry, I'm starting to babble, but the Lyrotelanthus they're really beautiful and their eyes glow blue so I didn't really know that before um, the pink guy I believe is a dispar Anthias. Uh he's doing okay but the big leer tail is also picking on him so in this tank he's definitely he definitely seems way more comfortable coming out and hanging out uh, when he was in quarantine I, I knew for at least a week that he he spent a lot of time just hiding. On the coral side of things, um, I really don't have much to to share because every time I talk about my coral, it's like, well, they're growing. Uh, I, I do have trouble with zoas, and um, I think part of it may be because I had too little nutrients in the tank. So I noticed once I started feeding the tank more, especially with the tangs. Uh, some of the zoas that I thought, at least one colony I thought was gonna, I was gonna lose, has actually bounced back. 
so hopefully the tank now currently has 16 fish. I, I think everyone looks like they're alive, so 16 fish is correct. And um, I'm hoping this is going to be the final buy load for this tank. I'm not really thinking of adding any more fish into here unless I start getting losses. I really do like the green chromises. I like that they like to swim at the top of the water column. So in the future, I may end up getting a few more, but we will see. That being said, I, I'll definitely get more fish for the 75 gallon once it's set up. But let's check out some coral. Okay guys, so this is my favorite way of looking at a tank. In one of the Reef Builders video, um, the guy's ethos was, you, you always wanna at least take a look, a top-down look of your tank once in a while, because that's the best way of getting an idea of how your tank's actually doing. Oops. Sorry, I'm just trying to block the light here so you guys can have a look at what we're dealing with. So there's the Rainbow Monty. Yeah, he's looking great. I'll be honest, I I very rarely when I when I was feeding my coral quite often, um, yeah, take top down looks all the time, but But like I said, in the last couple of months, uh, with life, uh, things have gotten a bit more difficult. Oh, I love seeing all the little fish. So I'm going to try to show you guys the back because I do have the blue tennis right in the back. I haven't really been watching him, but as long as he's got color, I know he's alive. And looking from the top, yeah, it looks like he's growing quite a bit down there. So there is a lot of real estate back there that um, I could be sticking way more coral in. I, I will probably get rid of this leather. What's it called? A cold coral. It's really nice, but you know, I, there's just there's just way too much in this tank. So I'm gonna have to start doing something. Um, this Elkhorn, oh, he's so green. Look at that vivid fluorescent green. Like, he really pops when it's just blue light. Here's a red dragon. Yeah, this red dragon, he's growing like crazy. There's my frag rack. Uh, I don't know if you guys can make it out, but if you look on the top, Right on the top, center top, there's my frag of Yagami Tort. And you can see the coloration from there is what I consider ideal. I'll try to give you guys a better shot. So this is my bonsai. He's not really colored up like a bonsai. I'm expecting more purple, but that might come with time. There is, oh yeah, and here is, so I'm gonna talk about this guy later. I, I believe he's coloring up because of all these additional feedings I'm giving the tank. And yeah, he's gorgeous now. Here are my e-cans, they're all pretty happy. Yeah, all these chalices are doing really well. I think they're gonna look really great in the 75 gallon. The Zoas have been doing really phenomenally since I've been feeding the tank more too. Um, 
So here's the strawberry shortcake. He's almost fully encrusted over the additional base I gave him. So I'm really hoping um, in like the next couple months he'll start shooting up new heads or new branches. There's the hammer. You know, this purple tip hammer, he's so common here. But in the right lighting, he's phenomenally beautiful. I, I'm really glad I got him. There's my green frog spawn. What else do I have? Satoza. Yeah, look at that Satoza. You'll see, uh, I got some Zoa heads trying to pop out through there. Pretty much it, guys. Uh, yeah, take more video, but my back's starting to hurt. Oh. And this is, I believe, this is a red planet. It was sold to me as a red planet. I think one of the problems is I have it up too high, and um, so its coloration is not as vivid or as strong as um, I would like it to be. And then this acro is just, it's out of control. I gotta start fragging him. And yeah, there are actually a few pieces uh, I have to frag, but uh, I wanna show you guys this guy. This is my Red Diablo. Oops. Sorry, the camera's having a tough time focusing. But uh, he's got some really cool growth patterns. You know, from the side, he's, he's not been very impressive, but from the top, like, holy. That's something else. Oops. So this is my frag in the corner of the Yagami Tort. It's looking pretty nice. Uh, beside him is the green slimer, Bali green slimer. And then here's a teal deep water acro that's really um, popular in my area. It's it's not a uh, Hawkins or anything, but he's pretty nice. So yeah, I got this guy from Brody. Here is a hairy Green polyp, well, greenish yellow polyp uh, acro. Uh, I just haven't gone, gone around to finding a good spot for him yet. And I think once the 75 gallons up, I'm gonna have a lot of space for all these guys. Here's a Starburst Monty. This is a Christmas Monty. And then I got my Cali Tort. Oh, and here's the Favia. Sorry, this is at the side of the tank here, so got a lot of quartz. And then this guy, I I think this guy's a Monty Cap. But yeah, he's he's killing it. Oh, you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the Peloensis being a little bit, um, I'm noticing some white areas, I'm not sure what's going on there. But wow, oh, the bonsai looks great from this angle. And the red dragon. Yeah. I forgot to mention, one of the guys I'm really having trouble with is this Akan Barabanki. He's, he's just not done well in this tank and he's constantly receding. He's definitely not as puffy as he used to be. Um, I'm really not sure what to do with him just because the other Barabanki, although it was the smallest one and I thought for sure he was probably gonna die. He's been fine. He's actually, 
I can see he's forming proper circles around the two mouths that were cut. Um, because when I received him, he was basically two half mouths. And now he looks like uh, it's about three quarters of the way there. So maybe in another month or two, he'll be fully healed. So, sorry, here's the, the other one. But he's doing great. Um, they have really nice feeding responses. I'm just really bummed out that uh, this having such a hard time. I'm gonna try, now, all that being said, one of the other things I haven't been doing is feeding the coral. Uh, February was insanely busy for me. And um, to add to that, March was pretty busy, but not just busy, I was dealing with a couple colds. Ever since I increased the nutrients, these mushrooms have been going crazy. Uh, at one point, they were actually receding. And now, there's so many of them that they're just hopping off the rock, trying to attach to other things, which I don't like because they're kind of pissing off some of my other coral. So, uh, I'll have to thin these guys out for sure. Here is the Rainbow Boom. No. Here's the Rainbow Monty. Um, I'm not sure if it's the additional nutrients that are coloring him up really good. Uh, a while back, and I believe if you looked in, if you can check out my older videos, my February and my January update, uh, his polyps were kind of going to just one color, uh, the kind of yellowy green. However, I'm not sure when the edges started coloring up like that. But now, now you can see like, it's, it's really rainbow, which is very nice. So there is the retracted Digi, uh, forest fire Digi. And here is uh, one of my favorites, the rainbow loom. And behind him, you got the pinky dinky and the denim on denim, so the two millies behind him. One of, one of the issues I'm having with the Rainbow Loom, I think his coloration is kind of, it may be fading a little bit. Again, I'm not sure why, but I haven't done a water change in three months, so it might be time to, to start up again. Uh, and the whole reason I, I stopped doing the water changes was because the water was coming out really slow from my RO buddy, and and I read that uh, when it gets too cold, that can happen. Uh, after talking to a fellow hobbyist locally, so Tony, he he mentioned that I may want to look into getting a booster pump because that's what he's done and. Um, Having the proper pressure is very important for your RO, RODI. It, it can help your RO membrane last longer and, um, and work more efficiently. So if you don't have adequate pressure, your RO membrane is not gonna filter as much. And as a result, you're gonna notice that your DI resin is gonna get used up much quicker. So, Thanks, Tony, for that tip. Uh, the booster pump I ended up getting was a... <coughs> smart Buddy. And the reason I got that was because I already have the RO Buddy, and um, so I, I guess it's kind of brand loyalty, brand recognition. Uh, so this is my Paloensis. Parts of him are looking a bit uh, lighter. So I'm not sure if that's to do with the salinity as well. But I have noticed with, and when I say there's more nutrients in the tank, I'm, I'm just saying that from the point of view that I have been feeding the tank more. I don't, I haven't actually measured phosphate or nitrate levels. Um, I could, but 
at least at this point in time, I, I don't really see a need to. Um, yeah, one of the side effects, I believe, from feeding more is that my Yagami tort, is that what it's called? Yeah. It's uh, coloring up to how I want it to be colored. So, if you guys look at previous videos, it was really yellowy, like kind of pale, and then the tips were purple. Now, uh, the yellow is becoming more of a green. And I, I know in lower light, they will actually display even better color. And I have a frag of him in the corner in the back of my tank. I can't show you guys because um, I've also gone to into the habit the last couple months of just cleaning this front glass. But that guy, when I look at him, at him, I'm like, whoa! Like the coloration is is very very nice. So um, I, I kind of wish I could put him in a bit of a lower light. However, he's kind of stuck there, so no, uh, he seems to be doing okay. Man, that's pretty much it. Here's a shot of my sand bed. So if I had to do some moving, you see some of these zoas. Uh, they used to be beside the mushroom rock, but those hairy mushrooms, uh, they've started detaching and then attaching the other rock. And the last thing I want them to do is to um, irritate any of my other coral. But one of the other cool things is, so, so, um, sorry, I can't get the best angle because of the Cephastria in the front. However, this Florida Recordia in the back. So for those of you who, who don't really know Recordia, uh, there are two types. There's Florida Recordia and then there's, uh, Yuma. My understanding, uh, I've never kept a Yuma, but my understanding is the Floridas are easier to keep. However, you're not going to get the um, the nice patterns and some of that beautiful coloration in the Yumas. However, I think this guy is pretty cool and I've been feeding him. So I haven't been feeding the tank very much the last couple months in terms of uh, target feeding. However, um, I did notice this guy was getting really big and I was hoping that that was, uh, he was propagating himself and I believe he's finally done. So my one Florida Recordia has become three. I see at least two mouths, uh, I, I can't see the one in the back, but I think there are three there. So, so that was pretty cool. I. If I want to sell some, uh, I can. Um, but I have seen some pretty cool uh, YouTube videos, some really nice rockscapes that have a lot of recordia on them. So this could be something to build in the 75 gallon. We'll, we will see. And then my chalices are doing great. These two chalices, I, I am planning on moving them to the 75 gallon once that is ready. And you know, you know what? I yeah, I'm talking a lot about the 75 gallon. Is it's because I, I'm starting to get really excited about it. I'm getting close to filling it with water. I've got maybe a handful of things that I could probably get done in a weekend. And I will be going down to Vancouver in a couple weeks. So uh, when I head down there this next time, I'm gonna pick up some bulbs for my T5 fixture. But uh, I'm gonna talk about all that uh, maybe in a video next week, just to let you guys know where it's at. But, but once that tank is up, I'm gonna move a lot of these pieces over there, a lot of the LPS. And that will actually free up this tank. Maybe for more acros. I will have to see. 
one of the other things I've noticed since Skimmer's been off and I've been feeding more is that the Zoas seem much happier. So I did go through a point where the Zoas were growing like crazy and then they kind of stopped and slowed down. Now they seem to be back um, growing and not receding. So take from that what you will. Uh, the one thing I'll, I'm going to take from that, and I have read this online as well, is that um, you know uh, nutrients are important for a lot of these coral, and that probably explains a lot of some of the changes that I'm seeing here. All right, guys. I. Uh, you know what, I hope I wasn't too subdued in this video. I, I really don't want to hurt my throat again. And I know I'm still recovering, so... Thanks a lot for watching. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I will see you guys next time.